All right, let's begin. Uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us. Again, I'm Jesse Hansen. I'm your host for today. Today's talk is configuring and running large scale optimization problems with RS Opt and will be presented by Dr. Christopher Hall. Chris is a research scientist here at Radiosoft. He earned his PhD in accelerator physics at Colorado State University, where he studied collective effects in energy recovering Linux. He currently works on computational physics on a range of topics that often involve particle accelerator simulations and optimization problems. We also have Dr. Stephen Webb with us. He is a senior research scientist here at Radiosoft, and he'll be helping answer some questions during the Q&A. Again, we'd like you to please use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit your questions rather than the chat so that we don't lose track of those questions. We'll run for about 25 to 30 minutes, then have a Q&A at the end. And if you're ready, Chris, uh, you can go ahead and unmute and we'll get started. All right. Uh, thanks, Jesse. And thanks for everyone uh, tuning in today. Uh, so I'm going to be talking, of course, about uh, RSOPT, which is a uh, Python package being developed at Radiosoft uh, designed to help manage large scale uh, optimization work. And here when we refer to large scale, we're generally talking uh, about the evaluations required for the optimizer are going to be some sort of uh, computationally intensive uh, simulations. So either a few very large simulations running or perhaps uh, uh, many uh, concurrently running smaller simulations. Um, so I'm going to give uh, start out by giving a bit of an overview of kind of the, the philosophy and the motivation behind the development of RSOPT, uh, and then uh, give kind of a high level view of how you set up and interact with uh, RSOPT as a user. And then we'll conclude with uh, hopefully with two examples just to give a flavor of uh, what it actually looks like in practice. Uh, to use uh, RSOPT. Uh, so when we think about uh, running some sort of optimization job uh, that's going to require external evaluations, we can kind of break it down into uh, three major components that are uh, disparate, but are going to need to all communicate with each other uh, in some way throughout the process. Uh, so you have, of course, uh, normally some sort of uh, optimization library or, or software. Uh, here, we're considering that to be distinct from the, the simulation software. Of course, many packages include their own internal optimizers. Here, we're mostly concerned with when you want to use uh, an external uh, algorithm in some form. So your optimizer is going to need to be able to uh, set up and configure uh, your simulations. Uh, normally, this, there's something that happens beforehand uh, with setting up input files, and then those need to be uh, edited at runtime at each step uh, to reflect the, the new state of the simulations that need to be run uh, by the optimizer. And then for actually running all of this, uh, there's going to be some sort of uh, execution management or setup. And this is gonna be very system specific normally, uh, depending upon how you want to run your simulations and your optimizer, uh, what resources are available to you. Uh, and even uh, what kind of hardware is being run on. So of course the optimizer needs to be able to launch simulations on demand and also communicate uh, the results back in some form uh, to continue the optimization loop. And so the goal behind RSOPT is really to take uh, all of these components and centralize the, the setup and the data passing uh, in, in one place. And so that's when we say modularize these, that's what we're talking about. Uh, each one of these three components are, are some sort of module that should be distinct from each other so that if you want to change any of them out rather than having to uh, rewrite a, a lot of code to facilitate uh, all the communication that's happening here uh, with RSOPT, it's as simple as hopefully just changing uh, a couple of lines in a configuration file if you want to change how the simulations are executed or swap between uh, optimization libraries that might have different APIs, for instance. Uh, so to actually give a couple of uh, particular use cases, uh, a big driver for uh, RSOPS development is when you have an end goal of being able to run some sort of large optimization job uh, at a high performance computing center. Uh, so 
example that we use RSOPT a lot uh, would be uh, NERSC, uh, for instance. And uh, these HPC centers often are kind of difficult to work with. Um, you're going to normally go through some sort of queue management software to actually launch jobs, um, which is going to slow down your development cycle. And it's often uh, takes a lot of time and effort to even get codes compiled there and up and running. Um, so what can be really useful is to start on some local resources and maybe a, a smaller cluster you have access to or even a personal computer uh, and be able to develop uh, your simulation pipeline in stages. Uh, but of course, this means that as you're changing machines and environments, uh, perhaps from a, a small cluster up to NERSC, uh, that's gonna change the way you run things. Uh, and so RSOPT is designed to uh, make it so you don't really have to consider that. The, the, with just a couple of line changes for the execution, you can move from your own personal computer over to running on NERSC. And all you have to do is copy over your input files. Uh, as I already mentioned, of course, you may want to swap between uh, different optimization libraries or, or set up different ways to run a parameter scan. Uh, and just by way of simple illustration of that, this is from a beam matching uh, example where you're trying to uh, fit a beam to certain conditions in a, a photo cell. Uh, this is in RSOPS examples. And here you've got the, the goodness of fit represented along the vertical axis. Uh, so uh, lower is a better fit versus uh, optimization step. And you can see it, there's a big difference here. There are three different algorithms being compared and you can get much better performance uh, with some algorithms versus others, depending upon the problem you're running. And then finally, uh, we run a lot of uh, particle accelerator codes at Radiosoft and so RSOPT in particular has some uh, special tools to help facilitate the use of uh, various commonly used particle accelerator codes. And so this encompasses uh, having support for uh, automatically parsing input files. Uh, so it's very easy to use your existing uh, input files for these codes. And also just doing uh, boilerplate uh, operations like handling uh, distribution handoff, the particle distribution handoff, if you need to run a, a sequence of codes in some sort of start to end simulation. Uh, so just to as be very brief highlighting of kind of the major libraries that uh, underlie RSOPT uh, as much as possible here, uh, we're trying to make use of uh, the great community resources that are available to already uh, solve some of these problems in a very general way. Uh, and so the first one of those uh, is a library called LibEnsemble. Uh, this is uh, developed at Argonne National Library uh, as part of the Exascale Computing Project. Uh, you can find uh, link to them on GitHub down here. It's definitely worth uh, checking out if you're interested uh, in these kind of problems. Uh, and so LibEnsemble uh, is a, uh, a library designed to help manage large numbers of just arbitrary concurrent uh, valuations. And it operates uh, uh, very high level on the a manager worker paradigm uh, where you're going to have a central manager process facilitating a number of workers that are launched on whatever resources are available. And so these workers will be running the simulations, uh, perhaps even on uh, separate clusters and generation uh, functions as LibEnsemble refers to them. Uh, for RSOPT, these generation functions are just always going to be uh, some sort of optimization or uh, parameter scanning algorithm that's specified. Uh, and so the nice thing about using something like LibEnsemble though is that it provides a lot of automation for detecting system resources uh, and flexible uh, distribution of the workers across those resources, as well as you can also in uh, a very fine-grained way uh, specify if you want particular distributions uh, of the workers just yourself. Uh, it also can automatically detect uh, execution options. And it's normally what sort of flavor of MPI might be available, uh, including uh, at places like NERSC can automatically configure the execution for you. Uh, so beyond all that, we also use uh, Lib Ensemble for just a number of boilerplate tasks like uh, handling, uh, separating out the run directories and keeping track of their locations uh, so that all the simulations are being evaluated uh, in separate areas. Uh, Lib Ensemble handles all of the logging, uh, both of execution status and the progression of the simulations uh, for RSOPT and provides uh, summaries of the points that have been evaluated so far, normally in the form of uh, NumPy files. 
Now, the other major component uh, plays into the support uh, for power accelerator codes, and that's uh, making use of Radiosoft's uh, Serepo scientific computing framework. Um, and if you're familiar with Serepo, it may be through uh, serepo.com and the online platform. Uh, so RSOP doesn't make use of any of the, the graphical capabilities of Serepo, but we're uh, incorporating a number of the parsers that are available uh, for accelerator codes to be able to automatically read uh, input files. And just to give a simple example of that up here, I have a snippet of an input file for the code elegant. You can see there's this run setup block. And if you have say, a specification for the uh, central momentum of your beam and you want to change that at runtime down in the RSOP configuration file, maybe as simple as just saying run setup dot p central MEV and uh, set a new value for that. Likewise, you can do the same thing uh, for elements in the accelerator lattice, just directly specifying them by name. So here we're changing uh, the strength of a quadrupole or actually passing it to the optimizer and setting some min and max values and a start point for that. Uh, so give a, a little bit of overview about how you actually configure uh, your simulations in RSOPT uh, to, to start a job. Uh, all of RSOPT is set up for the user through uh, YAML configuration files. Uh, YAML is a very commonly used uh, uh, serialization language. You just write in plain text. And so each YAML file is gonna start out with some uh, block of codes. So this is gonna be an ordered list indicating uh, the sequence of codes you want run for, for any single evaluation. Uh, so down in this example, I would start out with uh, running Python and then proceeding to Elegant after that. And in between these, there's also options to run pre and post processing functions that will be defined uh, in Python files. So if you need to evaluate or uh, make some changes to the output of a code or check the status if you might want to cancel a job if things aren't going well, uh, you can handle all that through the processing functions. And then for each code specified, uh, there's going to be an optional list of settings and parameters. Uh, here, settings are values that exist in the input files at runtime that you might want to just change across the entire run. Um, and then parameters are going to be values that are actually passed to the optimizer or parameter scan uh, to be changed uh, generally at each step along the way. And then there's also then the setup block that's handled on a per code basis that's going to define how you want each code uh, to be executed. So here, uh, this is going to be code, Python code executed in parallel, which is shorthand normally for, for MPI execution and on 16 ranks. The final top, lop, top level uh, setup you'll do in the configuration file is then normally an options block. And this is gonna specify what sort of job you're actually running. Uh, so normally the software library that you're drawing your optimization from, and if that library has multiple methods, then they can also be specified here. And there are also a number of options then specific to the library being chosen and the method that can be passed to configure uh, the optimization job. And then the final thing that will often be included is if you need some sort of external objective function that's specified here. So this would be a function written in this uh, f.py module uh, just named f uh, in this case. All right, so I think, uh, oh yes. Uh, so the uh, here we give just a simple list of uh, kind of the currently supported codes. Um, see, uh, Elegant, Opal, and Genesis are all common uh, accelerator codes uh, that are also available on Serepo. Uh, Python is, of course, supported. Uh, both serial and parallel execution are, are provided for. If you have a code, say it's parallelized with MPI for Pi, for instance. Uh, and this also, Python encompasses uh, several Python-wrapped codes available on Serepo, such as uh, warp and uh, Synergia. And then finally, uh, there is also uh, availability for just any sort of arbitrary user supplied executable. So if you have uh, just a path to the executable, 
You can also uh, give RSOPT a, a prescription for how to modify input files uh, at runtime as well. If you want to see more about how to do that, that's available in the documentation uh, for RSOPT. Uh, for execution methods, there's of course uh, serial and MPI parallelism, I mentioned previously. There's also uh, special support for Shifter, which is a uh, containerization technology used at NERSC. And Radiosoft maintains a Shifter container. Uh, that has uh, all of these codes already compiled for you. Uh, so if you're running at NERSC and select the, the shifter option, uh, RSOPT will just handle automatically launching uh, all simulations through uh, a shifter container. And uh, I won't go through all the options down here, but you can see there are several different uh, libraries and parameter scan algorithms uh, currently uh, supported. All right, so uh, now we'll start out with the, the first of the, the two examples. Uh, this is gonna be hopefully just a, a very simple initial demonstration. We're gonna be optimizing the Rosenbrock function, just a, a common uh, optimization problem that we've defined up here uh, as a Python function. You can see it has two variables, uh, X and Y, and then uh, two parameters that can be set A and B, where A is gonna determine uh, the location of the minimum of the function. And you can see a, a contour plot of the Rosenbach function plotted down here. Uh, so the RSOPT configuration file uh, is shown over here on the left. You can see that we have one code being run, just Python. And we're gonna change this A parameter to move the minimum to be at one, one. There are two parameters, or sorry, two variables. Uh, and we set their min, max, and start positions here. Uh, for setup, we just give the name of the uh, Python file where we're gonna put our Rosenbrock function and give the function name. And then we can just run this in serial. It'll be very fast to evaluate. Uh, for the actual optimization, we're going to use uh, an open source library called NLOPT uh, that's available on GitHub and uh, the, the commonly used Nelder Mead uh, algorithm for the optimization itself. Uh, finally, we set uh, some tolerances uh, to specify the stopping and some exit criteria. So we'll have a maximum of 100 evaluations uh, if we don't reach our convergence criteria before that point. All right, so I'm gonna change windows here uh, over to our Jupyter server and we'll actually run this real quick. So to execute, we'll just use rsopt. This will be optimized since it's an optimization job. Configuration, since it comes out of a configuration file. And then the name of the YAML file. Hit return. It should go real quick. Okay, and we have our result. You see it spits out the, the minima that it found. Uh, after 84 evaluations, uh, it's very close to the expected point of 1-1. One, one. I'll just show the output from this uh, down here. So here we're seeing again that plot of the, uh, the contours of the Rosenbrock function. And these dots are the uh, points that the optimizer evaluated. So the, the dark starting points uh, somewhere up around here and then proceeding down to the minima 1-1. One, one. So I'm going to now show if you want to modify in place to run a parameter scan uh, over this, which you might want to do even before starting optimization. Uh, that's real easy to do even in the same file if you want to. Uh, so we're just going to do a scan over a uniform mesh. And to set that up, I'm going to add uh, one more setting here. We'll enter a samples number for our two variables. I'll just do 50 in X. And and Y. We'll go ahead and comment out this block here and we'll set our software to be mesh score scan. And I'm gonna go ahead and add a new setting here for uh, the number of workers running the scan and workers. So we'll do four. So this will be uh, four concurrent evaluations all running in serial in this case. 
And we'll just set a, a new run directory so we don't clash with the previous one. All right, and hopefully if all that correct, now we can go back to the terminal window and now to run this again, enter rsopt, now it'll be sample for a uh, sampling job, again, out of a configuration file and that same file name. Let's we'll see if this was set up correctly. There we go. Uh, so all the results of the, sam of the, uh, the sampling are saved to this uh, H sample file. And this is just a NumPy file that you can uh, then read in in a notebook. All right, so that concludes uh, the first demo here. We'll move on to a little bit more complicated problem uh, specific to doing uh, particle accelerator optimization. Uh, so this is going to be uh, doing an optimization that involves a start to end simulation. We're gonna begin with uh, an injector for an electron Linac uh, that's simulated in Opal. So this is just gonna be composed of an RF cavity and a solenoid. And that's going to feed in then to the rest of the Linac section. We have uh, two sections of RF cavities here and a bunch compression chicane. So four dipole magnets here that will be simulated uh, in Elegant. And I'll open up the uh, configuration file here and we'll walk through a little bit of what is happening here. Let me bring over a second window. So on the right here, you can see the uh, input file that's gonna go to Opal. Uh, defining that injector simulation. And if we look now at the code blocks on the left in uh, the configuration file, we start out with Opal uh, at the top here. You can see that there are some settings where adjusting the distribution. So you scroll down. This is defining the input distribution that's going to be emitted into the simulation. And you can see we're adjusting these three parameters, uh, defining the time structure. Uh, of the injected distribution just to make it a little bit shorter uh, when we run this optimization. Uh, so then there are two parameters being optimized over in the Opal section. It's going to be this lag setting, uh, which is just the phase of the RF cavity. And then we also scroll up so we can see it here. Uh, this is the RF cavity here on line 16. And then also on line 19, the solenoid. And we're gonna uh, have the strength of the solenoid as one of the parameters. Uh, so then the setup block here for Opal, we're gonna run this in parallel, just on four cores. Uh, we give the input file name here. And then, as I mentioned, there's uh, the distribution passing between Opal and Elegant is automated. So we give the output distribution file name and uh, RSOPT will know to grab that and do the conversion uh, when it sees that Elegant is gonna be run next. Uh, likewise, we have the block for Elegant. Uh, it looks pretty similar. There's a single parameter, or sorry, there are two parameters here for just a single element though. And that's the phase and voltage uh, of that second LINAC uh, gonna be included in the optimization. Uh, Elegant is also being executed in parallel. And here we give the input distribution file name. So this is what uh, RSOPT will write the distribution to before the elegant simulation starts. Uh, so then the options block here, we're gonna use uh, 15 workers, uh, each running uh, Opal and Elegant in parallel. Uh, we specify an objective function in Python uh, since we don't get any direct uh, output from elegant to use. I'll just show that here. Uh, so that's this objective underscore f function. And all that does is just uh, here read in the output SDDS file from elegant. It computes the bunch length and the horizontal emittance. And we're going to try to minimize uh, essentially the sum of those two. Uh, this is a global optimization. We're going to be using an algorithm called uh, Opossum that you can find bundled with LibEnsemble. Uh, and this is a, a multi-start algorithm that runs uh, many simultaneous local optimizers. Uh, so we're again, for our local optimizer, we're going to pull one out from this NL, NLopt package. Uh, we then specify a few options for Opossum. 
And then we're going to let this run for a maximum of 300 evaluations. And this record interval just means that RSOPT will be uh, providing updates on the results for every 25 uh, evaluations. But even in this simplified case, uh, this still takes uh, about 20 to 30 minutes to run. Uh, so I'm not going to actually show the execution of it. Um, you'll flavor what you can get out. Uh, so this is uh, some code in this notebook uh, that's just pulling out the uh, results from Elegant and uh, getting the final emittance and bunch length. And then if we plot those for all 300 evaluations down here, this is the bunch length in picoseconds versus the normalized uh, horizontal emittance. And you can kind of see what you might expect if you're familiar uh, with this kind of problem, uh, where there's a trade-off that's beginning to form between the minimum bunch length and the minimum uh, emittance that you can hit. And this is just based upon as the, you lower the bunch length, uh, you're increasing the intensity of the distribution and you're going to be more uh, uh, subjected to more collective effects, especially coherent synchrotron radiation in uh, that bunch compression chicane at the very end of the LANAC. Uh, so then real briefly, uh, I'll just show, if we go back to the YAML file, if you wanted to take this from the Jupyter server and then maybe increase the, the number of evaluations you're doing or increase the fidelity of the simulations and you intended to run this on uh, NERSC, that can be as easy as just going to this execution type here and we normally replace that uh, with shifter. And you just do that for both the Opal and Elegant. You would probably want to change the, the number of cores and the number of workers uh, appropriately um, for the hardware that you're running on. Uh, but that's really all you have to do here. And so we'll be providing uh, all of these uh, example files and then I'll also include a, a batch script. that will show you how you can launch this. Uh, if you do have access to NERSC and want to try that out. And so I think that's it for the examples. Let me swap back now to the presentation and uh, I think we can move on to the uh, Q&A. Okay, awesome, thanks Chris, that was uh, very helpful. Uh, to start with, we've got a couple of code-based questions. So the first one is, what codes does RSOPT support? Uh, sure, let me go back a couple of slides. Uh, so on this list, uh, I call out a couple of particle accelerator codes, Elegant, Opal, and uh, Genesis that all have that uh, special parser support. Uh, I should mention, we're talking about this, that Genesis is actually not provided uh, through uh, Serepo, it's actually through this very nice Lume Genesis library that's developed at Slack uh, that handles the parsing for RSOPT. Um, and then there's also uh, just Python in general. If you have a Python-based code or just you know, a particular Python function uh, that can be run in serial, or if you've written the code to be uh, parallel uh, capable, you can also launch uh, parallelized Python jobs as well. Uh, and then this uh, user supplied executable, if you provide the, the path to any existing compiled executable, that can also be used uh, by RSOPT if you want. And hopefully there'll be more added. Um, there are plans to uh, hopefully add additional codes with, uh, with parser support as we go. I had a quick question, Chris. Um, do you have sort of examples of, of uh, running code using Python, using a Python script uh, for codes that aren't directly supported by RSOPT? Uh, so if, are you talking about Python-based codes? Uh, sure. Uh, there are some examples. Um, let me actually move a couple of slides here. I'll call out that uh, all this is available on Radiosoft's GitHub page uh, under the RSOPT repository. And there are several examples there uh, as far as the, the question about non-supported codes, you can find uh, one of the examples involves the magnetostatics code radio. And there's an example of how to run a parameter scan uh, with radio uh, in RSOPS uh, uh, repository. Great, thanks. 
All right, thanks, Chris. Uh, next, we have a question from Nicole. And her question is, are the RSOPT input files for Opal and Elegant significant, excuse me, slightly different from a regular input file? I noticed some quotation marks in the Opal file. Uh, no, they, um, they're not significantly different. The, the Opal input files uh, that came out of uh, one of the Serepo based examples and it does have a particular way it likes to format it, though I believe it's all consistent with uh, Opal's uh, rules for how the, the, the input file should be configured. And that is a, a legal input file for Opal that will accept and run uh, just natively. Uh, for Opal in particular, there are a couple of features that are not currently enabled through Serepo's parser, like uh, specifying the lattice in an external file, uh, for instance. But I believe most of Opal's uh, uh, input file definitions are available through Serepo. Great, thank you. And then we do have one more question. And that is, is there any limitation on user supplied executables? Uh, that is a good question. Um, in theory, no. Um, mentioned, uh, you just specify a path and then often that you expect to be, have to pass, uh, some sort of, uh, command line input or, um, input file names to the executable. And there are provisions for, uh, providing arguments in the command line as well as, uh, the input files. So if you, you provide the input files essentially as strings in a Python module, and then RSOP can edit those uh, at runtime with whatever parameters you set that need to be changed. Um, so I mean, there probably are some exotic cases that are not currently covered, but uh, you know, RSOP is in active development. So I'm always happy to uh, try and provide uh, support if there are problems people are interested in tackling that are not currently uh, able to be run. Thank you. And then we have one more follow-up question from Nicole. Uh, mm -hmm. What is the largest problem you have run, i.e. in an SGA2 case? Uh, let's see. So we are actively using RSOPT right now for some uh, moderately sized uh, Linux optimization jobs. And I think the largest one I've done has been across, it was around 120 nodes uh, on NERSC for several hours. And then one more. Um, would it be possible to string two codes together, i.e. to run Opal and then put that output into Elegant? Uh, yeah, you can, you can definitely do that. Um, uh, so as far as the particle distribution, you don't need to pass, that's handled automatically by RSOPT. Um, there are also you know, more complicated cases where you might you know, want to interrogate that distribution and read some sort of you know, parameters from it and even use that to modify uh, how you're going to configure the elegant simulation. And you can do something like that through the uh, post-processing function. So you would read the output distribution uh, in some Python function you define. Uh, RSOPT provides a, uh, a dictionary that's maintained globally where you can store data and you can set you know, some setting you wanna change and elegant in that dictionary and uh, RSOPT will read it and adjust the elegant simulation uh, setup at runtime. Uh, so more complicated cases like that are also possible uh, if you have to run codes in sequence. All right, thank you. Um, that is all the time that we have for today. So thank you for attending our webinar. Thank you to Dr. Chris Hall for hosting this here for us. If you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to contact us. You can get a hold of us at webinars at radiosoft.net. We will send you a follow-up email shortly with the link to our YouTube channel and a uh, private link to today's webinar. And then that will be made public uh, a few weeks from now if you'd like to share it with anyone else. Thanks for uh, showing up. Thanks for participating. And we will see you next time in July.